Yeah, well, it's me, Terrible Cellboard, back with the whopping uh, part four of the Linux tutorial. We've already gone over how to install it from the live USB. You change the BIOS to boot uh, from your UEFI, should be good to go. Look at the previous part. So now I'm just going to do the initial setup. So, of course, you're downloading Linux to try it, but if you've installed it already, right, at least with Fedora, you get this welcome thing right here. And it's like, oh, I, I don't want location services. I'll help them out with automatic problem reporting. I'll enable the third-party repositories. Fedora has good, good integration with uh, things like Flathub and stuff. Um, so next, oh, what's my full name here? Uh, Turbal Cell Bore. Yeah, that's right. Next, I'll make a password. Don't look at my password. Good enough. Good enough for a home computer that isn't connected to the internet. That's good. Next. All done. Let's start using Fedora Linux. So now we got the now we got logged in, right? And everything seems to be working. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the tour. Uh, because I already know what I'm doing. So instead, what we got here is we got ourselves a computer. All you got now it's logged in, it's ready to go. But you know, you may not know what to do on Linux. Like you want presumably you're watching this channel, you like games, you want to do some gaming. There's a couple of things you're gonna need first, and I'm gonna go over the software you need in order to succeed. So first off. We're going to do this all through Terminal. So let me just get this set up here. Uh, I guarantee you that there's an easier way, and that's using GNOME software, but I'm not going to do that. You know how to use an app store. If you don't, uh, don't come to this channel, because I'm not going to tell you how to do that. All right, so what we got here is I'm going to go over into Keyboard, and I'm going to add, I'm going to do as a special uh, Keyboard Shortcuts. I already did a video on this. Well, we'll just do custom shortcuts, add shortcut, and this is going to be terminal. The command is going to be gnome terminal. And then the shortcut is going to be control alt T. Now let's do control shift T. It's that shortcut, control shift T. All right, we'll add that. So now we're just going to go control shift T, and there's my terminal. So there's a couple different terminals, but gnome terminal is the one you're going to use, right? So first off, we're going to talk about commands. Uh, I already did a couple Linux tutorials on this, but let's see, you guys, sudo dnf update. Now, if you're doing this on Ubuntu, it's going to be like apt get update and then apt upgrade. But the nice thing about Fedora is dnf just does it all in one go. It's like, do you know that you are a super user? I'm like, yeah, I know, because I had to install it. So it's just going to do it. I have internet connected, so it should work pretty well. So first thing is this command updates it. So there's been it's been about two days since I downloaded this image. So there's been a couple updates, um, and there's a lot of things. Uh, Steam drivers. We got the non-free repositories enabled, and then it's like I want to download like a gigabyte of updates. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. Just give it a sec. We'll edit this out. So don't don't you worry about it. This is what would happen though if you open the software center. It'd be like download updates. This is just faster and uses less resources. You know, you don't need graphics. That's all I'm saying. Plus, you look like a hacker. Look at all this this text on the screen, like flat pack, uh, GL. I mean, it's going too quick. Uh, Grub two tools dot something. I don't know. There's a lot of updates. I'm not that kind of computer guy. Now, if you're wondering why my system is updating quick and yours is updating slow, and some of you will have a much slower update, uh, the reason for that is is again, I'm using an NMVE. So it's basically like having uh, old school RAM as your hard drive. It's, I mean, it's static RAM, right? I think, I don't know the principles behind NMVE. All I know is it's fast. <laughs> it's way faster than my disk drive. So this used, computer used to have a disk drive in it. Um, HDD, great for long-term storage, sucks at like high speed access. So now it's just gonna do a bunch of transaction checks and public keys. We're gonna need some software to make gaming easier. So just a moment while it uh, proceeds to update. Updates ready to install, huh? I don't think so. We're in the middle of updating right now. Okay, now we got 1,400 updates to apply. So hold on while I edit this. 1,400 updates. All right, there we go. There's a shit ton of things got installed, all that. And then we're just going to use the systemctl command 
So all that does is reset a bunch of background processes, make sure that everything's using the up-to-date version. So we got that downloaded. So we'll go ahead and get out of there. So everything's updated. So when we open the GNOME Software Center, it shouldn't whine too much about needing some updates. All right, so a couple of things you're gonna need in order to be a cool game on Linux. Number one, you're gonna need VLC. Now I know this seems weird, but VLC has a lot of really great dependencies that just come with it. And it's really nice. So I'll just download that. Uh, it's got like FFmpeg, all that stuff, which may or may not work in its default form. So we got that going on. All right, so we're going to get that installed. Next, we're going to go uh, Steam. You're going to want Steam. I, you know, there's problems with Steam, but, you, but the thing is Proton's too good. That's the problem, right? Proton's so great. And if you're wondering what the heck is Proton, uh, Proton is a compatibility tool with Steam that makes basically every game on Steam work with Linux, even if it requires some tweaking. If you're not sure, you go to ProtonDB and it'll tell you whether or not it's working, but most of the time you can get them to work, right? So we'll let that go. There's a couple of tools. So number one, we got Wine, which should be installed by default, but you know, I don't know. And it's gonna slow down, because of course it will, even though I'm connected. Compatibility layer for Windows. So, I there we go. Let's so install Wine. You're gonna need it. Uh, trust me, you're going to need it. So Wine, uh, we've talked about it in previous videos, but Wine is is a tool. Uh, it's, it's pretty great. Uh, it allows you to play uh, various Windows softwares on your Linux machine. All right, come on, baby. Just load already. Man, it's taking a sweet time. I, this is why I don't use the GUI. All right, so then we got... Oh, come on. I hate the GUI so much uh gnome software fix it okay you're gonna want wine tricks it's gonna be really useful you gonna want that all right and then we're gonna go to proton and there's a couple of things with proton but really the one you want is you want this one you want proton tricks um it basically lets you do all the same stuff you can do with wine using your steam thing so you're gonna need that it lets you make adjustments to uh wine prefixes and we went over that in another video i'll probably put the link in the description because that's what people say right all right so we got proton we got that now we're going to need a launcher of some kind i'm going to do play on linux and we'll plug it play on linux come on baby yeah and so that's all the software you're going to need you're going to need a vlc you're going to need steam you're going to need wine you're going to need wine tricks you're going to need proton tricks and you're going to need play on linux or Lutris. I don't use Lutris, so it's a pretty good launcher, but uh, I'm going to play on Linux. So uh, once this gets installed, uh, I'll talk to you about configuring it, but there's one more thing we got to do. And that, of course, is because everybody uses Python for everything, we got to go for uh, uh, Py, was it Py install async core, I think. All right. Well, I didn't like my keyboard shortcut for some reason, but just opening GNOME Terminal by going up, by hitting the Windows key and typing GNOME Terminal uh that worked just fine so i don't know but uh what we got to do here is we got to install uh async core so i believe it's pi i think it's pip install async core dot pi pip huh sudo dnf install pip it take a sweet time because it's installing a lot of shit you know what i mean all right so you got python 3 dot pip right and i'm just gonna install that Real quick, real easy. All right, so then we're gonna do pip install asyncore.py. Could not find that version. Hold up one second. There we go. I found it. It was pi. It was pi asyncore, not not asyncore.py. My bad. But so now we got that working. So the reason I downloaded that is because a bunch of these like old ass, a bunch of these like wine tools wind up using weird Python calls and that's one of them. So we'll just go ahead and do that. But now if we go to play on Linux, it should just boot up. There we go, it's working. All right, we did it. So this system is now set up and ready to go for gaming. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments, but that's how you go from having a lot, no, just a USB and a desire to use Linux to actually running Linux on your computer.